Whew. You know when you have one of those shoots. So more, more, more. I should not been standing here. I'm sorry, Ursa. In today's video, we're gonna play with color. So I'm super excited because I've recently launched my product video course, which is jam packed with a lot of information that will help take your product videos to the next level. Have you ever shot a product but hate the lighting or the product is damaged and you want it to look better and want to fix it in post? I can show you how. Want to take a picture and learn how to animate it in After Effects to use it for a sweet transition? I can show you how. Want to create a custom backdrop for videos to make them really stand out? I can show you how. Don't miss out on my course. If you wanna make a career in product filmmaking or just up-level your skills, the link to join my course is in the bio below. I'm very excited because we are back again with whoosh, Sneak Energy. And they have sent me their new, un, uh, new unreleased flavor, Neon Punch. And they wanted me to get really weird and wild with this. So we got a bunch of paint. We got a we got black lights, which I'm scared to turn on in here. And we also got this neon tape and that's what we're gonna be starting with. Cool. And the plan for today is I really wanna get this kind of very vibe. Like have you ever been in laser tag before? That kind of vibe, that's what we're going for. Just a lot of colors in your face, making it edgy, very cool. And the first plan today is we're gonna take the C-stand, I'm gonna drill a hole right in the back of this. We're gonna have this floating in the air and we're gonna take a bunch of tape and making a vanishing point and have the tape rotate as we push in and flip between black light and not black light to create a really cool look. I've never worked with black lights in product filmmaking, but that's kind of part of the fun is always trying to push the boundaries, try something different that you've never tried before. And then if it fails, readjust and keep going until it works. Do the shot, we gotta remove the powder. The stuff is strong. Uh-oh, battery's dying. Me joking around, one sec. So what we're gonna do now is because we don't wanna see these C stands at all, we wanna cover up all the stands and we're gonna use this black sheet Duvetine type of material. This is actually just a black bed sheet. <laughs> Make it low. So we're almost there with it. I'm really happy with it. I wanna get a, a little bit more tape in there right at the bottom because it seems a little open comparatively to the top. But I also like it ultra wide like this, but we're gonna have to now take the time to do routine. So we've adjusted, we've honestly spent almost like what, five hours on this one shot. But like when you have something where you're almost there, you don't just settle for kind of mediocrity. Keep pushing it until you can get it to where you need it to be. Head into Disneyland. So we're finally on our second shot of the day. It's been a little bit of time. And what we're doing here is we've laid out this um, neon tape that shines with black light and gets really colorful. And we've laid it on this black acrylic and we're leading lines to our product. And then we have two nanolite tubes on the background, just holding vertically like that. So they're giving a nice, uh, back edge light to the product itself. Then we have our 300D with the Light Dome SE, and that's giving us our nice even top light. And then we have our key light, which is just a rectangular, gl 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 uh, <laughs> rectangular glow diffusion. And so what we're doing is taking the slider and we're sliding in on the 50 millimeter, and then we have all the lights off and then we timed it and went one, two, three, boom, reveal the product and it looks really beautiful. We're happy with it. And the last thing I'd say is that we have this little black box. It was a white wood box that I had 
and we painted it black and then we have the tape going and then leading up it, up it. And that was probably the most difficult part, kind of underestimating the angles and trying to get the tape to be even and straight. But it looks really beautiful and I think we're pretty happy with it, right? You see that? You hear that? Those are how sticky my floors are right now. This is quite disgusting. <laughs> We might have to, oh, it's crooked a little, that's why. So we need to see how it's kind of coming in like that. I wanna make sure that we have a very solid stream of paint coming because I want it to all come together and then hit and then pull out. And instead of just pouring them at different times, it's very inaccurate. So we're gonna use a funnel to make sure that we get it exactly where we want it. And we're using a pool noodle to connect this funnel to this clamp on a C-stand that's gonna be hanging right here. Okay, so unfortunately we've created a huge mess and it's starting to leak and the shot didn't turn out the way we wanted to. Sometimes paint just doesn't want to remove. We tried different things like petroleum jelly, we tried using um, waterproof spray, all these different things to wick the paint off and it just wasn't doing what we wanted it to do. And so I'm gonna take a break. It's really late at night. We've spent over 12 hours on three shots and I'm gonna go home kind of look through the footage and figure out how I can recalculate this. Sometimes you fail, you just have to start again. So it's all part of the process, guys. After I looked at the footage from that long day of shooting and things weren't just lining up, I realized and I was like, how am I gonna get this paint to come off the can? And I was thinking, I was like, well, we can reverse it. But the problem with reversing it is that then you'd have the paint just going reverse up into the air. And so it's literally this simple when it came to me while washing dishes, weirdly enough, is that what if we just flip the container upside down, then pour the paint on, then reverse it in post and flip the image right side up so it looks like it's dripping straight off. And that is the solution that we came up with. What we're gonna do next is I came up with this idea because I think it'd be really sick. I've seen a lot of videos just on YouTube, not in filmmaking per se, but of hydro dipping. What that is, is you take water and you spray different colors on the surface to make these really cool patterns. And then you dip something in there to paint it. And instead of doing that, I, I like the colors that we're doing. We're not gonna actually be hydro dipping per se to actually paint the thing, but it's gonna be a shot where we're gonna start with the camera top down facing this beautiful colors and then drop the plain canister into here. One drop. So what we have here is we have the container in here. We filled it up with pink glow powder because we're gonna turn on these black lights right when Alex opens the lid and then boom, bada boom. It's gonna glow, look pretty cool and hopefully give us very cool shot and I brought back the pants slider and all the pants slider is is I stick my slider in my pants. That sounded wrong. <laughs> so all it is is it's in my belt loops right here. I bat on like this. Oh. the shot it doesn't look like so that's good I'm sorry Ursa I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial it's been a blast to make if you have enjoyed my course and the awesome community we built be sure to check out the link in the bio below if you have any questions please feel free to reach out if you haven't liked or subscribed you know the drill until next time Yeah, so